Okay, some of you might be wondering why we use double values in our time sharing structure from the last lecture, rather than the more standard float. After all, we seem to use floats everywhere else and never use doubles. Do we? Well, you might if you understand floating point precision well enough. The thing about floating point numbers is the larger the number, the less precision you have. It's a bit like Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. You can determine a particle's position with precision, or its velocity, but not both. The more precision you apply to measuring one attribute, the less precision available for measuring the other. And it's a bit like that with floating point numbers. You can have small numbers with high precision, or very large numbers with low precision, but you can't have it both ways. The FAP get current time function returns the number of seconds since the machine you're working on was booted. This could be a very high number indeed, in the tens or even hundreds of millions being commonplace. And yet, with this time sharing class, we're often talking about sharing fractions of a second, maybe even tenths of a second. And if we're talking about seconds measured in the millions, then we're going to lose the precision that we need. For the technically minded, a float has 23 bits of mantissa, and 2 to the 23 is about 8.5 million. For the less technically minded, by the time you get to this number, our precision will have been reduced all the way down to integers only. Yes, you've lost all your precision after the decimal point. All of it. That means if we'd have stuck with a regular float for our time sharing class, and the FAP get current time function returned more than 8.5 million seconds, which is very common, then the most frequently we could share time is just once per second, at best, which is obviously not fit for purpose. Quite shocking, isn't it? You can't even store numbers with integer precision by the time you got to just tens of millions. Let's take another quick example just to reinforce the point because it's an important point. Take a number of say 100,000. Not very big at all really. Store that in a variable and then iterate around a few times and adding 0.1 to it each time. You'll get a sequence of numbers like this. You see, we can't even store tenths of a second accurately with numbers as low as 100,000. And it's even worse than that though. Try adding 0.5 to 10 million. Go on, add it. Add it again. Loop around 100 times adding it again and again. Nothing. Nada. That 10 million remains resolutely fixed because you're trying to perform an operation on it that would yield a result of less than half of the precision available at that range. Half because rounding plays a part here. And if this sounds bad, it's because it is bad. This, guys, is why we're using doubles in our time sharing class. With doubles, we have 52 bits for the mantissa, rather than 23. And 2 to the power of 52 looks like this. And that's a staggeringly high number. And I'm sure that you can see the massive scope this gives you for range and precision. And for our time sharing class, this fixed things for us perfectly. But don't be tempted to go overboard with doubles. I'm sure you know. Most of the engine and the technology it's built upon uses floats. So you'll have all sorts of conversion issues if you were to use doubles everywhere in your code. And doubles are obviously twice the size of floats, so you'll have memory cache and storage problems to consider too. So no, you need to be very measured in where you use doubles. Here, in this very discreet time sharing structure, where the internal numbers aren't really exposed anywhere, and there's only a couple of them, and the structure's tick function run just once per frame, we have no concerns about performance, size, or type conversion. So, I think this should serve as an important lesson to you about range and precision. If you're working with a high numeric range, then you need to be concerned about precision. Is it enough? Will a float suffice? 
Or would it be better to use a double instead? Or would simply rebasing the numbers be a better option? What? What, rebasing? What's rebasing? Yeah, changing the base against which your numbers are measured to bring them into a smaller range. Let's look at a hard example of this. In our time sharing structure, we called f up get current time to get the number of seconds since the machine we're running on was booted. But we don't need to know that explicitly. We just need to have a running clock since the time the game was loaded, or even since the current game mode was started. If we measured time against when the current game mode was started, then the most we have to worry about is a few hours of play, which for say 10 hours is just 36,000 seconds. And for most games, it would be considerably less than that. This is much more in the realms of what a float type was designed for while retaining enough precision. So grab the FAP get current time at the start of your game mode, perhaps in begin play, and store this in a double as base time. Then every frame tick, grab FAP get current time again and subtract base time from it and store the results as a float in current time. You can then use current time directly rather than calling f up get current time to grab the advancing clock time, which was always the intention. And this is what rebasing is all about, changing the base against which you're measuring things. Just ensure you convert to float only after the rebasing has happened. Here we used a double for base time and f up get current time also returns a double, which is exactly what we need. Only after we subtracted one from the other, the rebasing where we reduced the numeric range, did we convert the answer from a double down to a float. And needless to say, this is an important point to note. So, I hope this has thrown a little light on why we use doubles there, and also why you need to be very aware that increasing range equals decreasing precision. And there's a great blog entry in the lecture resources if you want to dive deeper into this surprising subject.